So what's the deal with AMP caches? Why do they exist? AMP caches are a fundamental part of AMP, yet misunderstood. Every day, developers ask me why they can't just get their AMP pages onto some platform serving AMP pages, like Google Search, without linking through the cache. While AMP caches introduce some trade-offs, they do work in the user's favor to ensure a consistently fast and user-friendly experience. The caches are designed to A, ensure that all AMP pages are actually valid AMP, B, to allow AMP pages to be preloaded efficiently and safely, and C, do a myriad of additional user-beneficial performance optimizations to content. But before we spend a little more time talking about these, let's talk about the three elephants in the room. Why the caches require new URLs and what it means to attribution and link sharing. So AMP caches require new URLs, which technically breaks the origin model of the web. And there are some downsides to this. But I promise we're not just doing it to mess with you, but we're doing it for a hopefully nobler reason, to make adoption easy for everyone. You could theoretically get many of the cache advantages through other means, but a small site often doesn't have the resources to manage its own DNS entries or name servers or to push content through complicated APIs or pay for content delivery networks. For this reason, the AMP caches work with a simple URL transformation. A webmaster makes their content available at some URL and the AMP caches can then cache and serve the content using their own worldwide infrastructure through a new URL that mirrors and transforms the original. It's as simple as that. But now you might think, what does that mean for my analytics? And do I still get the money for the ads served on my pages? And I have good news for you. AMP attributes all traffic to you, the publisher. Through the AMP analytics tag, AMP supports a fairly large number of analytics providers to make sure you can measure your success and your traffic is correctly attributed. And AMP ad does the same for ads. One potential downside is link sharing. And yeah, let's be honest. It's annoying to copy a different URL than the canonical URL to share with someone. However, the issue isn't as large of a problem as you'd think. Google, for instance, amends its viewer with a real canonical meta tag. So posting the link to any platform that honors these should result in the canonical URL being shared. Other ways to mitigate that is to add a share button, which is exactly what Google Search has done in the AMP viewer. With these cleared up, let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's talk about validation, or how I usually say it, when the label says AMP, you get AMP. It's critically important for platforms and search engines to know that if they're sending traffic to an AMP page after showing users the little lightning bolt icon, the user actually gets what was advertised, a fast and user-friendly experience. Unless, of course, you find a way to make a slow but valid AMP page, which is hard but not impossible. I'm looking at you, big web fonts. AMP consists of an ecosystem that depends on strict validation, ensuring that very high performance and quality bars are met. One version of a validator can be used during development, but the AMP cache ensures the validity at the last stage when presenting the content to the user. Now, let's take a look at AMP's custom pre-rendering, which only works in combination with an AMP cache. And look, if you take anything away from this video, it's that pre-rendering, especially the variant in AMP, greatly outweighs any speed gains you could theoretically get by hosting directly from an origin server. Pre-rendering can often save you seconds, not just milliseconds. If you ever ask yourself the question why AMP doesn't just feel fast, but instant, it's because of pre-rendering. So why can't we just pre-render AMP pages from the origin servers? If we did, we couldn't guarantee that a page is valid AMP on the origin, and valid AMP is critically important for the custom pre-rendering the AMP.js library provides. Instead of simply pre-rendering the entire page, valid AMP documents allow you to preload only the things that matter most. Only the assets in the first viewport get preloaded, and no third-party scripts get executed. This results in a much cheaper, less bandwidth and CPU-intensive preload, allowing platforms to pre-render not just the first, but a few of the first AMP pages a user will likely click on. Because AMP pages can't rely on browser pre-rendering like I just mentioned, normal navigation from page to page doesn't work. So in the AMP caching model, a page needs to be opened in line on a platform page, say, in an iframe. AMP caches ensure the platform page can do that safely, preventing a large number of cross-site scripting scenarios. The AMP caches started out with what I just talked about, but they have since added a number of transformative transformations. They optimize HTML through measures such as bringing scripts into the ideal order, or removing duplicate script tags and removing unnecessary quotes and white spaces. Or they rewrite JavaScript URLs to have infinite cache time, and finally, they optimize images, which is more than a 40% average bandwidth improvement. Google, through its AMP cache, is doing lossless, meaning without any visual change, and lossy, so without noticeable visual change, compression. In addition, it converts images to WebP for browsers that support it and automatically generates source set as their attributes, so-called responsive images, if they're not already available, and generating and showing correctly sized images to each device. So you might be asking, isn't there a better way to do this? And Look, I hear you. The provider of an AMP cache is mirroring your content. It's an important role and comes with great responsibility. If 
the cash provider were to do something truly stupid, like inserting obnoxious ads into every AMP page, AMP would stop being a viable solution for publishers and thus wither away. AMP has been created together with publishers as a means to make the mobile web better for publishers, users and platforms. It's why the AMP team has released strict guidelines for AMP caches. To give you two interesting excerpts, the guidelines state that your content needs to provide a faithful visual UX reproduction of source documents and cache providers must pledge that they will keep EARLs working indefinitely, even after the cache itself may be decommissioned. These and many more rules ensure that a cache doesn't mess with your content. I just walked you through many of the wins and trade-offs of AMP caches to provide an instant feeling and user-friendly mobile web experience. But what if we could get to many of the same awesome optimizations without the trade-offs? and without involving a cache at all. Personally, I dream of a future still to be invented web standard that would allow us to get there, to move beyond cache models. These kinds of fairly advanced features like static layouting and safe pre-rendering require far-fetching changes to the web platform. But hey, just like forward time travel, it's not impossible, just very, very difficult. So join me in figuring this out by getting in touch in the comments below or on Twitter or Slack. And know that I always have an open ear for your questions, ideas, and concerns. Onwards.